So, now let us take numerical example, what we have here is let us say capital as we have fixed at 5 and here we have labor and where we have output. So, let us say let us take some example, labor is 0, it is possible that to produce something, but we will take that here in this example, when labor is 0, cap output is also 0, it is a made up example. Then what we have that capital at the same labor, labor goes up to 1, then let us say total output is 2. I am trying to create a table and then again it is fixed at 5, it is labor is increased from 1 to 2, output goes up from 2 to 6. Okay. Now, you got the drift what I am doing, I am again keeping the capital fixed at 5 and increasing labor from 2 to 3 and output goes up from 6 to 12 okay. and so on. I have already this, there is nothing sacrosanct about this example, this is an artificial example that I have created to illustrate certain concepts. So, let me just quickly make it 12 and then 20, if you say 20. 25. I am not, see function, function if you remember, function is the, just the combination of you know some inputs and outputs, some independent variable and dependent variable. Sometime we get algebraic expression, sometime we do not get algebraic expression. So, let us not worried about, let us not worry about algebraic expression, that is not the aim right now. 6, uh, it should be 5. 6, 27 and let us say 5, 7, 28, 5, 8, 28, 5, 9, 27, 10, 5, 10 and 25. Now, what we can talk about is that average productivity of labor, A P L. What is average productivity of labor? Average productivity of labor is Q by L, of course, for fixed capital. Capital has to be fixed, we are talking about and of course, average product, but first let me tell you what is average productivity of labor in words that it is the on average contribution of a one labor in production and of course, production depends here not only on labor, but also on capital, but since we are talking about labor we are we have we, we are keeping anyway we are talking about short run. So, we are keeping capital fixed. So, what is the average contribution here we cannot define, okay. how about here? Q, how about here? Here 4, 20 by 4, 5, 25 by 5, 5 here, 4.5 here, 4 here, 3.5, 3, 2.5. So, deliberately I have created this. Fine. It is clear. Now, we can also define similarly marginal productivity of labor and what is marginal productivity of labor? Change in output divided by change in labor or in other word that incremental contribution of additional labor. Okay. Mar you know incremental contribution. So, here we can start calculating from here labor went up from 0 to 1, what happened to the output? It went up by 2 unit. So, by adding one more labor, we increased output by 2 units. So, marginal contribution, marginal productivity of labor is 2. Similarly, from here to here again labor went up by, labor is has gone up by 1 unit. So, how much we cannot look at here, we have to look at here. 
Why? Because earlier output was 2, but by adding one more unit of labor, we are able to increase output to 6 units. So, here it is 4 and so on if you calculate, here we get 8. Basically, see here the jump is of jump is worth 1 unit. So, what we have to get basically is difference between these 2 and 20 minus 12 is 8. Similarly, for here we have to get difference from between these 2 and it is equal to 5, here 2, here 1, here it is 0, minus 1, here minus 2. So, now I believe you understand the concept of average productivity of labor as well as marginal productivity of labor. If we plot this, here we have total output and here we have labor. How would it look like? Increasing, then a peak, then decreasing. Just that, nothing more? Uh, decreasing slope. First, it is increasing at the, here let us say, here we have 1, here we have 2, here we have 3, here we have 4. So, not a straight line. Inici we do not know what is happening in the middle. So, initially it is increasing at the slower rate then it picks up, then it the rate of increase decreases and then it starts decreasing overall. So, what we have basically is something like something I let us not put it to the scale roughly I am saying what we have is basically like let us me put let me put here. But it is 2468, so it is following the equals to not 2, 4, I am here is q, total output, it is 2, 6, 12, 20 and it picks up where at 28. So, like we can say this is 7 or here it is like this, like this and here also it is, this is 8, fine, it is clear. Sir, overload of labor means uh, labor, to produce one thing more than labor uh, required are working on it. So, they are getting into each other's way and uh, there is not much work uh, as per the labor. So, one, one, one story that you can make that here capital represents number of computer and labor represents number of engineers, coders. Okay? Num then what is happening that earlier the com you have 0, you have no coder, you have no engineer. So, all computers are lying idle. So, you have 0 output. As you start adding engineers, they start occupying computer and start working. So, you have basically 5 computer, but till 7 because you know not all of them are working all the time. So, they can share computer, but after certain level what is happening is that that there is some kind of crowding, you know, like there are more people than number of terminals. Okay, so, one I, of course, I am not saying that happens all the time, but it is possibility that if there are more people, they would start chit chatting and the productivity would go down. So, typically it has been observed that if you increase one factor beyond the limit, you know, and limit would vary in each of these cases, then the productivity starts decreasing that is what happening here, fine, is it clear. Now, tell me how can we represent average productivity of labor on this graph, what is average productivity of labor on this graph, slope of line from origin to that particular level of output. Like let us say if I want to calculate average productivity of labor at this point, what we will do, I will go here and see how much is the output. This is the output at this particular level and we will draw a line from this point to the origin. How, what is this? This is q at this level, let us say it is a q naught and what is this? L naught. So, this is how we have defined the q naught divided by L naught is the average product of labor. Anyway, we are keeping the
capital fixed. Fine. So, at any point we want to get the average product of labor. So, what we have to do is we have to draw a line. So, what we can observe here in this graph that first average product of line average product of labor is increasing till probably this point and then it starts decreasing. So, average product if we draw here let us say we can say that average product of labor is increasing and then it starts decreasing. How about marginal product of labor? How can we get the marginal product of labor at any this point? Slope of tangent at each point. Remember how we have defined? We have defined marginal product of labor as incremental contribution of additional labor. So, marginal product of labor is delta q divided by delta L. What is delta q? Change in amount of output and what is delta L? Change in amount of labor, but the way when we say again I keep repeating this again and again, but so I will do it one more time that when we are talking about incremental contribution of an additional labor, what we are talking about that q of L plus 1 minus q of L and L plus 1 minus L, but this is not very precise. This de the above definition is precise. Here we are the increment the increment is equal to one labor, but if we have a continuous function then we can take even smaller increments and if we take small enough increment what we will get as a marginal product of labor d cube del q by del l why del why this partial derivative because capital is fixed okay so we can say capital fixed and what is this del q by del l how can we represent it in this graph? This is the tangent, this is the slope of a, the tangent to the total output curve at one particular level of labor. Okay. So, let us see if we want to in this graph, in this graph we want to figure out what is marginal product of labor, what we can do? One way to do it is that decrease labor by one unit of course, we will get here and see how much is how much is the change in output and this much is the change in output okay. and this is the change in labor that is equal to 1. So, marginal product of labor is nothing but this amount, but this is basically crude way of getting the marginal product of labor better would be to have just a small you know or we can talk about small increment here, we do small increment and see how much the capital has changed. If the increment is small enough, uh, how much output has changed? If the increment is small enough, what do we get? We get the slope of this, we get the tangent at that particular point and the slope of this tangent is marginal product of labor fine. So, we get the marginal product of labor given here as the above. Okay. So, what we can say here if you look at this point, if you look at this point which one is higher? MPL is higher why? Because here it is steeper, it is steeper. So, steeper, steeper means higher slope. So, till this point if you where it was tangent, let me draw again. I have already made that graph. Let us draw a simpler one. This should be dotted rather. Why I am using dotted, by the way? Why not the? Sir, because we took the assumption that firms would uh, increase their productivity and if the product is coming down, then there is okay. no sense to have more. Definitely. So, what we are, but again the definition of the production function, we are drawing this. This is basically production function, q as function of l, production function in one variable 
and what was the product definition of production function that we gave earlier? The maximum label that can be produced. So, here if you come if you look at this table using 9 how much maximum you can produce? 28 not 27 not 27 free you what you will do? Of course, when you are using 9 whole units you will produce 27 as the table gives, but what did we talk about earlier that you can freely dispose you can freely dispose some of the inputs and you will dispose probably two unit one unit or two unit and you will come to this that is why of course, here I am drawing the function that is why it is going down, but the production function cannot go down be beyond this point it will be fixed you will freely dispose of because we are talking about efficient level of production as you said fine. Okay. So, here we have q and here we have l and let us say at this point or rather take. So, slope of course, this is from origin the slope of this line is the average product of labor and how much is the marginal product of labor at this point? This is the slope of tangent it is clear and so marginal product of labor is more than average product of labor and so here if we draw. So, till this point it seems okay, we have another here it achieves maximum. So, if we follow this, so what is happening is basically the average product of labor is increasing till this point and then it is decreasing. Okay. It is not accurate, it is very rough done and the if we take the marginal product of labor what is happening at this point it is same, but here it is higher and how about at this point they are equal because this line becomes tangent done. Okay. So, basically just what will happen that at this point it will be like this.